Hey family! Um, I know it's been a while since I've been on here, um, but you guys know my motto. I don't come on here and speak until I have a word from the Lord. And I wanted to get on here and share with you guys something that the Lord just showed me about myself. And um, today was a really cool day because I, st I am participating in um, some... It's called Recover It All. And basically what it does is it helps you as a believer by the guidance of the Holy Spirit to deal with um, traumas in your life and to take ownership over your behaviors and the areas in you that are broken. And we know that, you know, there's circumstances in our life that we have no control over, but we do have control over the way that we process it. We do have control over the way that we respond to it. Hey, girl. Um, and so one of the things that really spoke to me um, was this word that came up and the word that came up was egocentric and I've heard that word before but for some reason it really just kind of stood out to me and so I looked up the definition of that word and the definition of egocentric is thinking of oneself thinking only of oneself without regard for the feelings or desires of others aka self-centered and we all that are human beings have a level of egocentricness in all of us because we are in this flesh and this flesh loves to be self-centered it's selfish and that comes from the devil right like the devil is very self-centered he wants the attention hi tasha um the devil's very egocentric he's and and in our flesh when we're walking in our flesh we too can function on a very egocentric level where we are very self-absorbed it's about me and what i want and what feels good to me and I was thinking about that scripture that says, um, I wrote it down, Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine, 39, that says, love your neighbor as yourself. And one of the things the Holy Spirit taught me is that you will love others how you love yourself. If you don't think highly of yourself, if you don't respect yourself, if you pick yourself apart, if you are critical on yourself, if you are highly judgmental of yourself, hi, Cynthia, you will treat other people that way. You'll be very critical of other people. You'll be hyper judgmental of other people. Um, you'll break people apart. You break them down. You tear down their character. The way you treat yourself is in essence how you're going to interact with other people in your life and vice versa. How people feel about themselves is how they're going to treat you. And so the Bible, what I love about the scripture, what I love about when the Holy Spirit teaches you is that the scripture doesn't lie. Okay. You're going to love your neighbor as yourself. Hey girl, and so one of the things that God just showed me about myself is that I can tend to be egocentric. I can, and egocentric is typically something that you see in a child because children have to learn to share. They have to, well, yeah, there comes, like at a certain age, they're very egocentric, right? It's all, because they're infants and it's all, it is all about their needs. The whole world bends to them because we're keeping them alive. We're providing all of their needs, but there comes a point in time where you have to learn to get out of yourself right and when you've gone through trauma when you've gone through things in your life that have wounded you and you learn to protect yourself it can cause you to be very egocentric and so one of the things I learned today about myself is that I have a tendency to be egocentric I have a tendency to be self-centered I don't mean to be but I try to protect myself and so what can what can happen with me is I can often in response to feeling threatened or in response to feeling uh, attacked or feeling controlled. That's my, I hate feeling controlled. I hate other people thinking for me, not letting me have a voice. Um, and I have a right to have a voice and I have a right to think for myself and I have a right to protect myself. I do. But the way that I often function in that is to just pull back completely. And I, I oftentimes will not consider how that affects other people um and that is egocentric okay um and the beautiful thing about having a relationship with god the more you get to know god the more he shows you yourself and sometimes the things that he shows you aren't pretty but god never is doing it from a place of trying to shame you or guilt trip you he does it to free you because remember I talked to you guys about how God plants seeds of promise and Satan comes along and plants seeds that try to choke out who you really are, who God's really called you to be. 
And the way he does that is through our trauma, right? The way he does that is through situations that have been harmful and hurtful. So whenever we start to feel threatened, whenever we start to feel attacked, whenever we start to feel cornered, our defense mechanisms come up. It's like survival, survival of the fittest or something like that, where you either fight, fight or flight, right? And so I'm sharing this with you guys because I think that we all can relate to being that way sometimes. I think that we can want to scour back and we want to, we, it's hard for us to deal with conflict. It's hard for us to deal with uncomfortable situations. It's hard for us to have those tough conversations. And here's, here's the boundary that God is teaching me is that you don't owe anybody an explanation. You don't owe anybody an explanation. You don't, you don't have to explain yourself to people because guess what people, some people are going to understand and some people aren't. And some people, the Bible does say, don't cast your pearls before swine because some people you're going to spend and exert all of that energy and they're going to just trample over it anyway. However, you should desire to treat people in a way that you want to be treated. And there is a thing called common courtesy, right? And sometimes it's just a matter of having a conversation of saying, this is what I need to do for myself. And I'm not coming to you for approval. I'm coming to you out of respect to tell you that this is what I need to do for myself. So that you understand why you see this change of behavior, right? Um, and so there is a difference between going to people for approval and treating people how you want to be treated. And so I challenge you guys to look at yourself and look at the places that you may have egocentric behaviors and allow God to show you how to navigate through that to where you can be true to what God is showing you and the direction that God is moving you and the things that God is telling you are best for you but in a way that doesn't crush and hurt other people. Because when we're guarded, you guys, when we're guarded and we've got, we're holding up our weapons to protect ourselves, then anybody who tries to come in the vicinity of you winds up getting cut up. And that is not the spirit of God, okay? And let me be clear, there are times when you do need to be firm. There are times where God will be like, there is no point in communicating right there because that you're not gonna be, heard and it's it is a toxic situation when it's a toxic situation then those boundaries are necessary and that's not you being egocentric that is you that is you putting up your proper boundaries i'm just speaking in general i've learned that sometimes the way i respond to things can cannot leave room for me to consider the way that it may be affecting other people and people may not agree with you people may be by may be hurt by decisions that you need to make for yourself and that is their responsibility to dig through that and why that hurt why that's provoking a hurt in them but it doesn't mean that we don't make an attempt to treat people respectfully or to communicate um communicate and so you know when i think about that scripture tr love your neighbor as yourself you are going to love your neighbor as yourself good or bad and so for you as the believer for me as the believer we need to ask the holy spirit to help us love others the way that god would have us to love others the way that he loves us so that we aren't creating trauma for other people from our trauma and we've heard this said hurt people hurt people right and this is why it's important that we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that we walk in step with the Holy Spirit so that he can help heal us in those broken places um, so that we can become whole in him, perfected in him. And you are perfect in him. And I don't mean perfect as in lacking flaws, but you are perfect in him because he doesn't make a mistake. He didn't make a mistake in the way he created you. And... Um, as God is revealing truth to you, as God is showing you the more excellent way, just be mindful that when you are changing and evolving, sometimes the people around you aren't. Sometimes the people around you don't understand. Sometimes they don't see it yet. Sometimes they'll never see it. And so you just have to be mindful that everybody is at where they're at and to give grace and to pray for them. But that doesn't mean that you have to be stuck. It doesn't mean that you don't have to, that, that doesn't mean that you choke out your growth or dumb yourself down for the sake of other people. That's not what I'm saying. So I just want to make sure I clarify that. You absolutely 100% have authority and permission through the Holy Spirit 
to move as the Spirit of the Lord is telling you to move. But just be mindful that everybody may not be where you're at. Be mindful that everybody can't receive what God may be doing in your life. And so don't allow the enemy to cause you to lash out or cause you to um, conduct yourself in a way that would hurt the testimony of what the Lord is doing in you, right? And so it is a very fine line, you guys. It is a very fine line of being respectful and courteous and flipping on the other side of falling back into being like a people pleaser and over explaining yourself. There is a boundary there. Um, and only God can help us navigate that. Only the Holy Spirit can help us navigate that because naturally we are selfish. <laughs> I mean, we are. Let's just be honest. Naturally, we are that way. We want what we want when we want it. We want it our way. It's the highway. We all have egos and pride. And we have to allow the Holy Spirit to help us walk in humility and willingly place ourselves underneath the guidance of Christ because we have the potential to hurt people we have the potential to do immense good and immense damage all in the same breath right and so that's why we need the holy spirit that's why god gives it to us and so i just wanted to share with you that i learned that about myself because the point of this page is to share with you guys my testimony of how the lord is maturing me in the faith and i do feel that um i have some apologies to make i'm not going to be apologizing for the direction the lord is moving me in but I am going to apologize if I have caused any offense. Um, because I feel that that's what God, would, is God is saying for me to do. And so I just wanted to share that with you guys. I hope it encourages you. Hey, Melba. Um, that God is, so, he's so good. He really is because he helps mature us. He helps us see things about ourselves sometimes that are very hard to see and very hard to acknowledge. But it's a part of the growth process, you guys. It's a part of being matured in Christ. And um, embrace it. Embrace it, no matter how uncomfortable it may be. Because the beautiful part is that when you embrace it, and you look at the things that God is bringing up to the surface, think about gold. Gold goes through a purifying process. It goes through the heat, goes through some some circumstances right for the dross to be the impurities is what the dross is to be brought up to the surface so that it can be wiped away god does that in our lives he brings up things about ourselves that we may not necessarily want to acknowledge because it can be painful it can be uncomfortable and our own egos think our own stuff don't stink right like the bible even talks about that there's a way that seems right to a man that's not okay and we always we always are going to be team ourselves. Yeah. We're always going to be team team ourselves, right? But we understand that this life is not about us. That but God is gracious enough to allow us to be a part of his plan. And in that, we have to if we're going to trust the Holy Spirit, if we're going to trust God, if we say we believe in God, then we have to trust when he's bringing things up for us to deal with. We have to look in the mirror, we have to be honest. Because God says to worship him in spirit and truth. And I believe that when we come to a place of really allowing God to help us acknowledge the truth about ourselves, that's when we really will experience a true move of God in our lives. Because we're no longer lying to ourselves and then we're no longer lying to him. And then he starts to reveal truth about other things. And it's, very, it's a very amazing process and experience. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um egocentric right egocentric i can absolutely be that way sometimes and there's power in confessing there is power in confessing your character flaws because it then allows the holy spirit to step in and replace that with the spirit of this the fruit of the spirit right and what what first corinthians 13 talks about walking in love walking in love yeah i'm glad <laughs> thank you i'm not alone Walking in love doesn't mean conformity, you guys. Walking in love doesn't mean agreeing with everybody. Walking in love is allowing the Spirit of God to move and speak through you and allowing Him to mature you and allowing Him to teach you how to deal with people who are difficult, how to deal with situations that are difficult. And you can get your point across and speak your truth in love and not and, and agree to disagree and part ways if necessary and, and have no love lost there. I'm learning that a lot of my defense mechanism 
growing up was to have to create have to almost create a reason to feel justified in doing what was right for me i needed to find a reason to be upset with you to feel justified in the fact that i needed to have boundaries between me and you and god is breaking me of that crystal you can believe what you believe move forward boldly in what i'm calling you to without needing to have a justified reason outside of the fact that the spirit of the Lord is telling you to do so, <laughs> you know, you know, and so I'm learning that. And I'm so glad that God is revealing these things to me about myself. Um, he's always going to take the plank out of our eye first. He's always going to take the plank out of our own eye first. And that's how loving he is that he corrects us. I keep saying that, but he really is so loving that he embraces us in all of our brokenness and all of our sinfulness just as we are yet the bible says right like yet while you were sinners he died for you god loves you no matter what but his love is so transforming that it won't leave you broken that it won't leave you that way he's going to heal you he's going to mature you he's going to mold you and reset some things and you're right it is just a matter of growth and that's what this thing is about, you guys. It's growing up and maturing in the Lord so that you may walk in your purpose that's been predestined by him before you were formed in your mother's womb and move in your true ministry and move in your that he is gifted to you through the Holy Spirit. And to get rid of the lies that Satan has been telling us and that we've been believing that have quenched the Holy Spirit in our lives because we're believing the lie over the truth. So let God bring up those lies so you can get rid of them and move in the truth of who you really are. Do you know who you really are? And the only way you're going to know that is when you truly come into understanding who you belong to and how great he is, right? So I love you guys. I wanted to share that. I know it's been a while since I've been on here, but I just did not have anything to share at that time. I am working on some things that the Lord has put on my heart. So I do ask that you guys pray for me. Um... As I move forward in the things that God has called me to do and to say, um, it's challenging for me and it's scary. It's scary in my own right, but I know through him I can do all things, right? And that um, he will give me everything I need to do what he's called me to do. Um, so pray for me in that matter and pray for me as I make, as I reconcile where reconciliation needs to take place. And also where I just make right the things that God is calling me to make right, whether it's received or not. It's not about it being received. It's about obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice, right? I love you too. All right, you guys. I love you. I'm praying for you. I hope to be on here more this week if the Lord tells me to. Um, and sorry, I just got a message. It's kind of distracted me. But I hope you guys have had a great week. If you need prayer for anything, um, I canceled this Saturday's fellowship um, because nobody had RSVP'd. It's not obligation or anything like that. It's simply there if people need to get together and pray. I have certain people reaching out to me for individual fellowship. That's fine too. I just wanted to have it as an option available. So I will create another one for this Saturday at 1 o'clock. If people are SPP, I'll be on there. Otherwise, I just pray for everybody at 1 o'clock. But if you are needing a one-on-one -on -one fellowship, and this is not like because Crystal has all the answers. If you just want to get together and talk about what the Lord is showing you, talk and, and we share and we glean from one another, I'm down for that all day. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask for that. Even if it's not for me, but other people in the group that you feel led to do that and connect with, listen to the Holy Spirit because he's, he's putting that person on your heart for a reason because either they have something to to deposit into your spirit or maybe you have something to deposit into their spirit or you're going to uncover something together so don't forsake the fellowship that to me is what it really means right <laughs> all right you guys i love you and i'll talk to you next time bye